Games of War 4th Edition brings you the battles of World War II in epic 15mm scale. Go to beastsofwar.com to get the latest in news, tactics and tutorials. From Viking halls to the cities of the future, terrain buffs will love our foreground hub. Watch gaming tables of all genres come to life at beastsofwar.com. Hi everybody, I am back with Michael from Simon, and today we are having a look at some of the Stark tactics. So, uh, Michael, what do you want to show off today for everybody? So today we're going to have a focus on the different Stark units and the unit attachments that go along with them. Okay, uh, well, let's get stuck straight in. We'll grab my favorite unit here, and everybody by this stage should know this is my favorite, favorite, favorite unit. It is, of course, the House Umber Berserkers. Now, these guys are a big, heavy-hitting unit that only gets stronger as their friends die around them, and that just makes me happy, because uh, I'm not exactly the strongest tactically sometimes, so... You know, getting rewarded for making tactical full pass, I can live with. So what we have here is an already expensive unit. This mm -hmm. is, in fact, the most expensive combat unit in the starter box. Mm -hmm. So by taking different attachments and adding them, you're going to be putting a lot of your points into one, you know, consolidated source. Yeah, yeah. It's going to up their potential considerably, but just note that that is a decision you're going to make. You know, mm -hmm. you're putting a lot... If this unit gets taken out, it's going to be a heavy blow to your army. Yeah, well, I mean, like... Mm... I do want to add an attachment to them, and there's one here that I haven't seen before. So, who is this? That is the Sworn Sword Captain. And he is got a very kind of plain effect, mm -hmm. but still insanely useful. Uh, he has the Martial Training Order, which is once per round when the unit attacks, after mm -hmm. you roll your attack dice, you can re-roll any of your misses. Ah, nice. So, I assume that doesn't stack with when I'm on the charge. I can't re-roll a re-roll? Correct. The die can only be re-rolled once. Mm. But it does give my opponent the problem that if they look at it and go, well, if I charge into these guys, they're going to get to attack me anyway and re-roll that. So it's kind of like having them always on the charge and making your opponent look at it and go, maybe I don't want to charge them. Maybe I just want to let them get to me. Correct. It's going to create a bad, you know, no-win situation for your opponent. Either let them get charged, but if I charge into them, then they're still basically going to get the same effect. Actually, it makes it even worse if I get on the charge and actually get onto the tactic boards for the second attack because I get my re-rolls from a charge attack. Even if I get a disordered charge, I can re-roll. And if I get a, a non-disordered charge, I can then grab the tactic board slot and still have an attack where I'm rerolling. Correct. That's another way you can look at it, is just some uh, additional insurance in case things go wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's... he is a one-point investment, so he's going to turn the unit into an eight-point unit. I can look at that. But it's only a point. Mm -hmm. All right, well, uh, let's uh, grab a different unit attachment here. So we've got a House Umber attachment. So who is this? That is the Umber Champion. And so his effect is Fury Unleashed. And it states basically as long as the unit has at least one destroyed rank, their attacks are going to gain Vicious. Vicious is going to confer a minus two to any enemy panic test when the unit attacks. Mm. So what that's going to do is if you attach him into a unit, he is going to allow them to start targeting the, uh, the psychological side of the enemy's defenses. Mm -hmm. So in this specific case of the Umbers here, they already have Sundering, so they're really good at punching through armor. Mm -hmm. This is going to allow them to also take down enemies that have a good uh, kind of willpower or morale stat as well. So it's going to make them a threat to basically every unit on the board provided that they have taken the damage. Mm -hmm. But they're umbers, they want to take that damage anyway. Yeah, and if I see a spiked wall in front of me, hey lads, let's go! You're right, just trample right through and take some damage. Yeah, uh, it's... This unit is one of those units that I think is... I, I hate to say the words auto-include in any game, but you would be silly not to have at least one of these in your force, because it's, it's sort of like a cruise missile. You launch it and your opponent just has to deal with it sooner or later. Well, it's going to depend on your tactics as well, because as I said, they are a fairly heavy points investment. Mm. For the same cost as the baseline of that unit, mm. I can get another unit with a slightly better unit attachment that might have the same combat capabilities. It depends really? on just, again, the role you want to have them take on the battlefield mm. and the army you're playing. If you're running like a full house umber list mm. led by the Great John, then absolutely load up on those guys. Mm. All right, well, uh, speaking of the Great John, let's remove the house umber guy here and pop the Great John himself in. I do have to say I love his miniature as well. It has really captured the character beautifully. Now, what will he do for our forces? So, the Great John is a commander, so we have two versions of him. We have his commander version mm -hmm. and his generic attachment version. Mm -hmm. The commander, you know, again, you choose one of those once per game. They add tactics cards to your tactics deck. Mm -hmm. Change the whole dynamic of your army. Uh, his commander version, the Lord of Last Hearth, is going to give you the Umber Rage ability, which is when the unit makes an attack, you can choose to have your unit take D3 wounds, mm -hmm. uh, but the enemies become both weakened, sorry, vulnerable and panicked means they're going to have to re-roll both their defense saves mm. and any morale test, uh, sorry, morale dice they roll. Mm. So you're really going to hit them hard, but you're going to suffer a little bit of damage for unit for, you know, doing so. But hey, we've stuck them in a Berserker unit, so they only yeah. get better when they take damage. Yeah, and again, uh, even if I start taking it down into the, the final rank, I can say, oh look, there's a slot on the tactics board. I'll heal some guys back. 
Correct. Uh, the one thing, though, to note is that there's a lot of times that people get overboard on stacking all these self-damage dealing effects, and mm. you're like, yeah, my guys are just getting better. But note that they do only have a 5-plus defense, yeah. so there is potential that, you know, you've got to be able to maximize that combat capability before mm. they get wiped out. Yeah. So by reducing them down too low, they could mm. just get wiped out before you gain any real benefit from them. Yeah, you see, this is the thing. For the Great John, you could stick him in a, a unit of Sworn Swords, who have the, the Stark Fury ability, but again, that's a... A stacked damage ability. So I think putting him in the Berserker is not exactly a bad shout. Right. Although if it is his commander version, again, you've got that thing of High Summer Unit and the Great John himself being on tactic cards, and you're sort of focusing where you can play those. Right, correct. So a lot of the Great John's cards do have the... They gain additional effects for targeting unit with the Great John or a House Umber unit. Mm. So in this situation here, you've taken Great John and the Umber unit, stacked them both in there. So you're limiting where you can really gain the maximum benefit of those cards. Mm. Versus if you had taken the Great John and stuck him, say, in you know, Sworn Swords, now you have two units that can get the maximum benefit of those tactics cards. Mm -hmm. So you're consolidating a lot of your resources in one location. Yeah, and um, what about his uh, his unit attachment variant? His lo uh, unit attachment version is the lo is Loyal Bannerman, mm -hmm. and it's going to give you two effects. Uh, he's a three cost, so he's going to raise these guys to being a ten cost <laughs> a unit. But for that, uh, for that investment, you're getting the Onslaught ability, which means that if you activate them via the combat zone of the tactics mm -hmm. board, they can make a charge action instead of a normal attack. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition, he's also going to give them the Fury of House Umber ability, mm -hmm. which is basically when you're attacked, you can make a full attack action back, but you're going to suffer D3 wounds after that. Mm -hmm. So that's going to further up their combat potential and let them you know, make more use of, the, uh, of their you know, offensive capabilities before they're wiped out. Mm. Let's see, I, I don't know. I think his, his unit attachment version, I might pop in there. And his commander version, yeah, I'd probably put in a unit of Sworn Swords. All right, so let's trade out the Great John and have a look at our last one here. So we have Rob Stark himself, the Young Wolf. Uh, what's he going to do in his unit attachment form? So again, having two versions, he's got his commander version and his unit attachment. In both situations, for taking Rob Stark, you're going to get Grey Wind added into your army. Ah, I see. So you get the puppy. Right, well, uh, unit attachment version. What's he going to do for these guys? So his unit attachment version is going to have a really big focus on maneuverability and speed. And he's, that's actually one of my favorite additions to stick into this unit. Mm. Again, we are talking about a heavy investment here. He's a three-point attachment. He's going to make them a 10-point unit. Mm -hmm. But they're going to gain the rapid assault ability, which is when they're activated by the maneuver zone. Mm -hmm. They can make a charge action instead of a normal uh, move. But mm -hmm. in addition to that, he's going to give them enhanced mobility. That's going to give them plus one to their speed value, bringing them up to a staggering speed seven. Uh -huh. But more importantly, it's going to allow them to pivot before they march. What that means is that basically there's never a reason for that unit to take a maneuver action because they can do the exact same thing mm -hmm. by doing march. And because they have that six speed, the Musa was seven, they're jetting across inches. the battlefield at 14 inches, just like okay. a rocket. Cruise missile. In addition, you're getting Grey Wind here as well. Yeah. Grey Wind does not do a lot on his own, um, but if he attacks a unit from the flank or the side or the rear, mm -hmm. he is going to make them vulnerable and with yeah, the Berserkers. Getting Grey Wind in first, then the Berserkers. Yeah, that could be craziness. All right, uh, I'd say let's leave Rob Stark with the Berserkers and draw in another unit. So, Sworn Swords. These are your frontline troops for House Stark. Uh, they have the Stark Fury ability, which I think is a great one because it's giving them uh, on sixes, isn't it two hits they get? Yes, they're getting the critical blow ability, mm -hmm. which is uh, hits of six are triggering, uh, sorry, rolls of six are triggering two hits, mm -hmm. and it's going to give them plus one to hit when they attack. Mm -hmm. All for the, you know, slightly cost of taking D3 wounds after the attack is done. Yeah, but it's only until they're down to one rank, which right. I really like. And then they can trigger it for free. Mm -hmm. Honestly, even though we haven't seen it, I would go for the Sworn Sword Captain in here, because triggering Stark Fury with him having rerolls would be fantastic. So just noting that, yes, uh, getting that uh, reroll ability on there is great because you can turn your misses potentially into more sixes. Mm -hmm. And again, it's just a generic reroll on your attacks. It's just, it's really hard to talk about because it's just a generic useful ability. Yeah, but it's, it's got such utility to it, depending on which unit you put it into. Put it right. in the Berserkers, oh look, they're rolling more sixes, rolling more sixes. And a heavy dose of the Stark Tactics cards are gaining various combat buffs based on the situation. Mm -hmm. So if I really need to punch through enemy armor, I've got a card that gives me Sundering. If I need to punch through their defenses, I've got one that gives me... Vi or sorry, their morale defenses, I've got one that gives me Vicious. Yeah. And stacking that with his rerolls means that that attack has that much more of a chance mm -hmm. to actually do the effect that I needed to at that given time. Yeah, honestly, I would pop him in there. Now, we do have one more unit here, which we should talk about. And they are actually the Cavalry unit, which we don't have a... A unit attachment for here, but you did say there is one coming for them, yes? Correct. So these are the Stark Outriders. 
Mm -hmm. And being a cavalry unit, something to note is that unit attachments have to be the same type as the unit they're attaching to. Yes. So an infantry attachment can only go into an infantry unit, cavalry, and so forth. Yes. Uh, there are no cavalry attachments currently, but actually if you check the Kickstarter, we did preview one that the uh, you're, you're getting as part of the Kickstarter, and he will be out in retail later. Mm -hmm. That is uh, Brendan Tully, the Outrider Commander. Mm -hmm. And he actually is a combination of both a commander version and an attachment version. Ah, But the okay. unique thing about him uh, is that we have his attachment version that I absolutely love. He can get a unit of uh, Stark Outriders yes. and allow them to actually outflank in the scenario. So you hold them off the battlefield, and later they deploy through a flank or the enemy's deployment zone. Oh, that, that could be vicious. Because, I mean, like... Uh, if you guys watch some of our battles, we played one or two, or no, we played one where we actually had units deploying from the size of the battlefield and from our own deployment. It really, really changes up some of the dynamics of your battles during this game. So definitely a unit attachment to look at. Uh, is that everybody? That is everyone on the Stark side. Okay, well, uh, everybody, tell you what, drop your comments in below. Who would you pop into what unit? We'll move on. We'll see you again soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now and be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.